Hi, Rich Karuba for BowlingBall.com. I want to talk to you about bowling through my eyes, my perspective about some common terms or phrases that we hear uh, bowlers say, uh, and we have for years at local bowling centers everywhere uh, throughout our country. Uh, and let me just make a, a few references to some phrases that I've heard that I think uh, if we didn't know anything about bowling would probably be pretty, uh, pretty confusing and certainly wouldn't tie together with uh, re something relating to the world of bowling. First of all, the two that we hear very often are, that's my house and that's my pair. Well, we all know if you're a bowler that refers to, that's my house, that's where you like to bowl. We've probably had a lot of success uh, and maybe uh, the given bowler uh, likes, to, uh, he likes to, you know, bowl competition in a given local center and, and, and he takes ownership of that bowling center. I'm sure the proprietor's like that. Same with the pair of lanes. Maybe you've had honor scores on that pair, or every time he bowls on it, he bowls good scores. It matches up good for his own delivery style. Those are phrases we hear often, but certainly the bowler doesn't own the bowling center or own that pair of lanes. So uh, it's, it's an interesting uh, way of phrasing things. Uh, we all say it. We all do it. And, but it doesn't stop there. For I heard a, 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 one time I was in a bowling center, and I heard someone say, that was in competition. I snapped off my opponent last night. He was talking to somebody else because he bowled well, maybe clutched out some strikes in the 10th frame of the final game, and he beat his opponent's score. Maybe his team won the game, uh, the league game, or, uh, or the league series. And because of that, he snapped off his opponent. But, you know, if you take it literally, that's, uh, you know, what would you, why would you want to cause har harm to some innocent bystander? Uh, uh, you know, it just doesn't make sense, some of the things that we say. It's kind of funny. And these are intended to be humorous and amusing, of course. Uh, another one I heard is, I left the ring and ten in the tenth. Ring and ten in the tenth. What does that mean, ring and ten? Where did that come from? When a six pin wraps around the neck of the ten pin, could be the same for the ring and seven. Uh, I've never heard of a pin ring my entire life. That's my point. I'm a stroker. Well, I kind of want to stay away from that one. Uh, I hope we're discussing a bowler's delivery style, because if we're not, uh, that's a little bit of an ambiguous sentence. I can't carry for poop. Well, there might have been another word used there. What do we mean by that? Well, the bowler's bowling, he's hitting the pocket, not getting strikes, leaving corner pins, not carrying very well. Bowlers use this term, but it's not a very elegant term, is it? Uh, I struck out in the 10th. Well, what does that mean? I struck out in the 10th. Uh, does that sound like a baseball player? He struck out in the last of the 10th inning and cost his team the game because the other team got the run and, and beat him. Uh, it, you know, three strikes in the 10th frame, that's what it refers to. We all know that. But how in the world did that phrase ever come to popularity? We hear it all the time. Or another one is, I chopped the bucket. How about that? What does that mean? Sounds like you had an accident in the barnyard somewhere. No, no. You just, maybe if you're a right-handed bowler, you left a 2, 4, 5, 8, and you chopped it and left a 5-pin standing. We all know that. Or how about with the washout? I washed out in the first. No one knows what that means. If that was in the military, it means you probably got kicked out of boot camp. Washed out in the first means you missed a head pin, left a washout, probably uh, did not convert the spare, and, uh, and you had a washout uh, open frame. And of course, others like, I still haven't gotten my first 300 game. I hear that a lot right now, a lot of times. And that probably irks me more than all the others, personally. We all have our own pet peeves, don't we? Uh, where is it a right of passage that you're going to get a 300 game, or I'm going to get a 300 game? It happens, or it doesn't. You can bowl a lot of games that could give you 300 score, but you, get, you don't carry it th uh, during, you know, it's hard to throw 12 strikes in a row. But you can't assume automatically you haven't gotten your first 300 game because your friend has or someone else has, and it's a rite of passage. That's a little arrogant in my view, same as with an 800 series, so I'll just leave it at that. The lane's fried out. There's another one. What does that mean? You cook it with olive oil, and they sautéed, and they got burnt? No, that just simply means the oil dried up from the lanes, and the ball's hooking a great deal. And sounds to me like uh, a bowler couldn't cope with the condition when they complain about the lanes frying out. Others are, I went Brooklyn on that shot, or Jersey strike, <clears throat> crossing over the head pin and getting a strike. We all know that. Where the phrases came from, well, you know, we guess that it came from the East Coast uh, terminology years ago. 
how about my ball died? My bowling ball died, which meant the ball lost energy or stood up or rolled out. It deflected when it entered the pins, uh, the pocket, and didn't carry a strike. Uh, but the ball didn't die specifically. I mean, there aren't, aren't funeral arrangements made for that bowling ball, of course. I lost the beer frame. God, misplacing something so valuable as a beer frame no doubt disappoints this bowler's teammates considerably. <laughs> I left a double p knocker last night. What does that mean? This? 4, 6, 7, 10? Yeah. But double p knocker refers to a card game. You know, if you didn't understand these bowling terms, you wonder what in the world are people talking about. And one of them was tripping the four. Uh, and I, I heard a, sto a, a story about my friend Harry Smith, Harry Tiger Smith. He was a great champion in the 1960s when the tour first got going in the PBA years ago. Uh, and I guess he had a little too much to drink. He was out uh, outside in Las Vegas going around and somehow uh, managed, the story goes, and I don't really have evidence this happens, but the story goes that he was thrown in jail overnight just to protect him so he didn't get hurt uh, or, or getting in trouble. So they put him in the tank just to kind of chill out. He had a little too much of the sauce. And the national tournament director, who was a good friend of Harry's, uh, another Harry, Harry Golden at the time, went down to bail him out and in the morning and uh, some of the when he it was reported that when Harry first got thrown in the cell with some of the others in the the drunk tank uh, they asked him what he was in there for and he said for tripping the four I rest my case hope you found some of this amusing you can read the article uh, like to take a little different you know direction once in a while I hope it doesn't offend anyone if it does you have my sincerest apologies just want to offer a little humor here and there. You take care. Thanks for visiting. All the best to you.